Now the transport layer depends upon the network layer because we can see that the network layer is just below the transport layer. So the transport layer uses the services of the network layer. Now for example if this process is communicating with this process then the logical communication between these two processes it is handled by the transport layer. But the communication between the source host which is running the source process and the destination host which is running the destination process this host to host communication is handled by the network layer now let us discuss this in a bit more detail for example the messages that are generated by this process these messages are given to the transport layer through the socket which is called as the source socket you can think of socket as a door so the messages are slipped into the transport layer through this door now at the transport layer either the tcp or the udp protocol can be used and in this example the tcp protocol is being used now if necessary the transport layer breaks down these messages into smaller segments and with each segment a transport layer header is attached and these segments are then given to the network layer and the network layer attaches its own network layer header to these segments and as a result these segments are now called as the IP packets. Now these IP packets are routed from the source host to the destination host using the internet protocol over the internet and once these packets reach the destination host and they reach the network layer of the destination host the network layer removes its header from these packets and these packets are converted back into the segments and these segments are then given to the destination transport layer the transport layer removes its header from these segments and converts them back to the messages and these messages are then given to the destination process through the destination socket